Hey guys, it's Phil from the Honda Resource. I'm coming back to you with another CRV video. Um, so this this particular video, uh, vehicle, the time of belt broke on it, and um, I'm gonna kind of walk you through fixing this. So switch this camera around, and we'll get to the video. We bought this CRV like this, so um, you know it's already half well not half disassembled, but some disassembly has already been done on here. They've taken off the upper plenum. So a bolt in here has a bolt on each side of the, or each of the corners of the plenum. So it has a, like a tank up here. One bolt, two bolts, three bolts, four bolts, and they're all 10 millimeter. So once you get that plenum off, you can then remove the valve cover. It'll have this PCV valve in the valve cover right here. Just pull it out. And then the power steering hose is right here in this bracket, bolts on the back of the head right here and then use the 14 millimeter head um, bolt. So you need a 14 millimeter wrench or a socket to remove that. And then we'll remove the valve cover. And there are 10 millimeter uh, nuts on these. Now it looks like they pulled the actual stud out with these. So I don't, I don't know what happened there. Um, but it's got two here and then one, two, three here. And it has a little plate that's supposed to bolt in over uh, back here so it'll have a nut on each one of these and then it'll have a little plate that goes from each of those that the upper plenum bolts to and then you can get to your little rubber grommets so all that's already off of this obviously the plug wires are already off too so once those are off you can see the valve cover lifts off i'm going to take this ground strap off real quick it's a 10 millimeter so i got the ground strap off and also i wanted to mention that this hose right here the little breather hose goes over to this pipe here and you'll just need to slide this clamp back to get this off so with that off, um, this is a Felpro valve cover gasket, and these are typically junk. They're kind of a one-time use. So once you use them one time, they stretch and they're really hard to be reinstalled. I don't really like the Felpro valve cover gaskets. I'd rather use like a Mall or OEM. Those don't really stretch, and they're reusable several times. So uh, as you can see here, the timing belt did break, and a lot of times people have the thought that these are interference engines and i guess in a sense they are and i'm not going to say it can't bend the valves but it's very rare i've had multiple uh b20s coming through here through the shop that time belts have broken and throw a new time belt on them and good to go so in this video i'll show you how to pull all the rest of it apart here and how to properly time the engine and install a new time belt and water pump i guess without further ado we'll um start tearing this thing apart and I'm bringing you guys along with me and we'll get this baby fixed up and back on the road and sold. All right, so one thing I like to do is to prop the hood up with something else besides the hood prop because the hood prop kind of gets in my way working in this area. So I'm gonna just take the hood prop and put it back down and then prop like so. You can actually go ahead and take this out too and just turns it comes out it's got a little s shape on it so you just have to turn it to get it out so i might take this out and get it out of the way some of the stuff that i'm taking off like the ground strap there for instance it's not necessary to actually get to this stuff but it makes it simpler not having to work around it for me all right and then i'm going to use a 10 millimeter let me pull you back over here all right so then i'm going to use a 10 millimeter and take off the power steering hose here Two 10 millimeter bolts but before i pull the line off i just like to put a drain pan beneath the car then pull the line off you can usually just tuck it up here in the back and i got the um down to the the uh, pump here so i got to get the pump disconnected so it's two 12 millimeter bolts it's one here on the top and then one down on the bottom And those bolts look like this. Then we can take our belt, slide it to the side, and then I usually just take the pump and lay it up here up top on like the core support. You'll have to pull the reservoir out of the bracket to get it up here like that. And also, I like to put a rag under it because it does tend to leak a little fluid. Power steering belt. If you have uh, any kind of concerns about getting your belts mixed up, you can put a piece of tape over them. Put a piece of like painter's tape over them like that and you can write on here power steering or whatnot 
All right, so then we gotta get the timing cover off and it usually has two 10 millimeter bolts. They're pretty long, got a shoulder on them. There'd be one here and one here. Um, like I said, somebody else started disassembling this and they've already removed those. So um, I can't exactly show you that. So, but with the timing cover there, it, like again, it would be here and here. So in the second part of this video, on the reassembly, I have all the extra parts to put it back together, even though they didn't come with it. And I'll be showing you how to reassemble all that stuff properly. All right, so now we have to get the AC belt off. And so we need a 12 millimeter for the jam nut. Let's see if I can get it to where you can actually see it down there. All right, maybe. Okay, so here on our AC tensioner, it's a 12 millimeter nut to jam it. And then it's the outside piece here is a seven millimeter. And that's what you're gonna back off. So we got the jam nut loose. It don't have to be super loose. And actually, since I loosened that jam nut, the whole bolt is turning, so I can just turn it by hand. If it doesn't spin very freely with you, like I said, the end of it is a seven millimeter, and you can use that to turn it out. So then we have to take off the nut. There's a nut right here or it's actually a bolt, a long bolt that holds this tensioner. So use a 12 millimeter wrench and make sure that we go in reverse. So you can see my wrench is on it right there. It's kind of difficult to get to in a sense. If you use a wrench with offset head, it's a little easier. But you see once I loosen that, the tensioner goes down and then you can get the belt off. All right, so with the AC belt, you're not gonna be able to remove it all the way off because of the torque mount. So I just pulled the AC belt forward and then on this the tensioner here, just pick it up and get this bolt the rest of the way out. And just take the tensioner off towards out of our way. All right, so once we get this bolt loose, you can see that the tensioner here comes off and set that to the side and now all we gotta do is remove the alternator belt. Next thing we gotta do is get the alternator off, or not necessarily off, but loosen up. So it's a 12 millimeter nut right here. So we have to loosen that, and then it'll let the alternator move in towards the block, and we can get the belt off. All right, so mine, like I said, I just loosened the top nut, and then I just grabbed the belt and pulled up on the belt, and it pulled the alternator in. So now I can get the belt off. Uh, if yours doesn't move, you can get it either to 14 millimeter nut down here Daddy. one second baby there's a 14 millimeter nut you see it right there right here so you loosen that and it'll take the pressure off the bottom of the alternator a lot of times you don't have to do that but sometimes you may all right so you could probably do this job without taking the wheel off but it makes it simpler to get to the crank pulley and stuff if you take the wheel off so i'm gonna go ahead and take this off for the 19 millimeter So once we get the wheel off, we need to get this off, uh, this piece of trim here. So a lot of times these I have like a little um, plastic piece here and here. Uh, this one's a little bit different than what's typically on them. Usually it has a little piece, it's, a, it's like a little 10 millimeter head on it. You spin it out and then you pull the little insert out and you're good to go. Um, but this tile here usually takes a flat head to get under the edge of it and pry it out. So put it under it and Usually they come out pretty easy. But if all else fails, it don't really come out. You can use it like a pair of cutoff pliers and you can get under the head of it and pull it out. So this is not the typical, like I said, not the typical connector for that. All right, so I just bend this back out of the way, like so. Let's see how it is and it gives us access to the crank pulley. All right, now to get the crank pulley off, it can be a little tricky, especially if you don't have the right tools. So you can get a tool like this. This is a crank pulley holder. You can get this, you can rent it at uh, most auto parts stores. And I mean, it works, but it takes a little more effort. I prefer the uh, Lyle weighted socket. This is a 19 millimeter socket and it's pretty heavy. Um, 
that in conjunction with a Milwaukee half inch impact, it annihilates it night and day. If you're doing a lot of Honda crank pulleys and stuff, I would definitely recommend spending the extra money in making this investment. Now, if you're just doing this one time deal, you can use this and a couple breaker bars and do it. So, uh, again, this is a, a crank pulley holder. You can get this at most auto parts store on the rental, or you can buy it. I think it's about $35, $40. So, and then the Lyle weighted socket, I think it was about $35, $40 too. But the big investment is the impact. So, I don't know that you can get this at the auto parts store. You may have to order it. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how to use this tool, and then I'll show you how well this one works. All right, so the way this works is this has a spot in here where essentially this goes. So you put that in there, right? And you would take a breaker bar. And essentially, you put your break, half inch breaker bar into it like this, and then you could um, put it over here and jam it in somewhere where it stays and then you take a 19 millimeter socket with another breaker bar and you could get that off now it takes some effort especially if you don't have a cheater pipe um, it'll make you work for it but if you have the Lyle socket I mean it's, it makes it makes the job super easy and effortless all right, so once we get the bolt out, then you can just slide the pulley off because we've already got all the belts off of it. Just make sure you don't lose the little key. Looks like that, it's a little square piece. You'll need that whenever you put it back together. All right, so now we have access to the lower timing cover and we can get the lower timing cover off. All right, so now what we gotta do is get the timing cover off. And it's got like these uh, 10 millimeter bolts like right here. Um, so there's several around the kit around this timing cover and as you can see also there's some white residue there from maybe the wheat pole on the uh, water pump was leaking so um, I'll get this timing cover off real quick with a little 10 millimeter like I said and I'll show you where all the bolts go on that all right so this is the timing cover and you can see here it has like one two three four five um, that's the bolts and they look like this got a little shoulder on them so they only go in so far also you'll probably have to unclip this it's just got a little tab right here and it slides over this bracket just so that you can have room to work that's the crank position sensor which is here now you can tell this stuff here is pretty nasty let me get it apart a little more and see what we got so now we just gotta finish getting this stuff off so we take the little ring off crank. You can see it's concave. So it always goes with the, the where it looks like a dinner plate facing out. Alright, so there you can see our old belt. Alright, so now I just gotta pull it the rest of the way apart and I'm gonna clean all this mess up. And I don't really like the crank sense or the crank seal is leaking so I may not replace that because it's, it's not wet around it's just filthy so a lot of times when they break a belt it's also going to mess up this crank position sensor so you just need to get a new crank position sensor and you may have to go to like to the Honda and get the new piece here that holds all this on this little bracket here that's held on by these two 10 millimeter bolts because sometimes it breaks that all right so I cleaned this up a little bit now I got to take off this tensioner it's a 14 millimeter head on there and it's got a little spring over here so we'll get that off, I'll show you all that. And then I gotta take off the water pump, which is here. And it has like five bolts that holds it on. They're all 10 millimeter. I'll take that off and then I'll show you. Um, also, while you're taking off your water pump, you may wanna sure, make sure you have like a, a drain bucket or something beneath it because it may leak some coolant. I did drain the coolant from the radiator uh, with a drain cock that's like uh, uh, right there. You can see it, the little butterfly looking thing. Uh, right there about the tip of my finger so um, drains that out and then so it shouldn't have too much in there it's still gonna have some so whenever you break that water pump loose it is gonna leak a little bit out um, so yeah I'm gonna get that stuff out and then I'll show you what it looks like once we get it out right, so this is our tensioner and you can see it has a little spring it clips into that little spot here and then it goes to the 
another little peg on the block. I'll show you that whenever we reinstall. And then this is the water pump that came out and you can see it's got one, two, three, four, five bolts. If, uh, if I was you, I would try to keep uh, the order uh, which the bolts come in. Uh, they are different sizes. So if you're unfamiliar with these, I would just recommend just maybe like if you already have your new water pump, just set them into the new water pump as you take them out. That way you don't lose them or, or get them in the wrong order the wrong order or whatever um, or you can just kind of lay them out like this so that you know all right that way you know because see if you lay the water pump back here this is the top here this flat side so you can see the top top bottom bottom middle so uh, this water pump was bad the, um, it's making a noise like when you spin it so the bushing or bearing in that was definitely on its way out too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing fresh and be ready to go in no time. You can see there, that's what it looks like without the uh, water pump or the tensioner on there. Now I would, uh, if you know, if someone had used silicone on the water pump, uh, I would make sure you clean it off with a flat edge razor blade or single edge razor blade, whatever. Um, you're not supposed to use silicone on it. But that's not to say someone hasn't done it before. Um, so you see our crank, our crank pulley here. Uh, is it is out of time right now, so I got to put it back in time, and then we can also go ahead and throw in the new water pump and the new tensioner. Now, a lot of people like the Gates kits, uh, the Gates timing kits. I prefer the Deco. I, I've used several of the Gates kits, and the belts are phenomenal. The water pumps, eh, not so much. Um, so. I've had really good luck out of the Deco kits. You can get those at most like your AutoZone or you can buy them off Rock Auto. And I mean, they're probably about a hundred bucks or so. Maybe a little more at the parts store, but it may be a little less on Rock Auto. But you see it comes with a new tensioner. It comes with a new water pump. And it comes with a new belt. And a sticker Keep, uh, to record your mileage. And it also comes with a little booklet that tells you how to do the timing. So, I don't ever use the book. I've done this too many times. If you want to use the book, use the book. Or you could just watch this video. Or not this video, the next video. The next video is the one I'll be showing you actually how to put all this stuff on. So, I think that's probably going to be enough for this video and just for time constraints. Just to make it, break it up to where you guys can um, get more information from all this. I'm gonna break in two videos. So anyways, guys, as you can see, it's dark out behind me now, and um, I'm actually probably gonna go ahead and start putting this stuff back on, but it'll be on the second video. So the first video, we just disassembled it and got it ready to install our new parts. So on the next video, part two, we'll be uh, reinstalling the new parts. I'll show you how to time it and do all that stuff. So be sure to check out the second video and um, We'll uh, get all this stuff put back together. But anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like the video if it was helpful. Leave me a comment and let me know how it helped you. And as always, subscribe so that you don't miss the second video when it comes out. And hit the bell for notifications. That way you'll be the first one to be able to see it. Um, I'm always here trying to help you know anyone that needs help on their Hondas. So if you have any questions about yours, make sure you post that comment below too. And also, be sure to check out the playlist on the first generation CRVs. I've done several repairs on these and I try to update a playlist for them. So make sure you check out that playlist, which will also be linked at the end of the video. So thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you in another video. And peace.